Hello everybody and welcome back to the CSHL and we're going to start off with a recap again here just so everyone knows who is represented by which team. So Crash Andrews is represented by the LA Royals. The Finn for the win will be represented by the Philadelphia Finns. We've got Newfie Bullet who is represented by the Newfoundland Tigers. And next up we have Arcade Regiment or Phil. Phil the Thrill is represented by the Toronto Tomahawks. Yours truly, that's me, represented by the Washington Whales. We've got Tactics HD, who will be represented by the Detroit Dragons. We've got X-Tech Gaming, who is represented by the Vancouver Lumberjacks. And last but certainly not least, we have Tugi, who is represented by the Boston Bulldogs. Now here's a look at the standings for the previous week. And without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in. To this week's matchups. Let's start by looking at the Finns and the Dragons here. Both teams are 2-1 and one, and they are both looking to pull ahead in the standings with a victory in this matchup. Early on, Matthews gets a leading pass, does a deke and takes a shot that will be kicked aside and back the other way. The Finns get a chance, pass to Backstrom in the slot and another great save by the netminder there. The Finns would give the puck away in the slot though. A nice give and go between Marner and Getzlav would get them in the lead. And that is a 1-0 lead in the first here for the Dragons. A nice shot attempt in the middle there that will also be saved. Ovechkin has a chance off the draw. Loses it. They get another opportunity there. But shot just wide. And that is how the first period will end with a 1-0 lead for the Detroit Dragons. James Van Riemsdyk comes in, takes a shot, but Vazzy will glove that one. Now the Dragons on the counterattack here. A little kerfuffle in front of the net. Taves goes to take a shot. It gets blocked, takes a second one that will be saved. Meet the crossbar and find its way to a lucky fan. Tavares with a pass down low to Raquel. Just great passing overall by the Dragons there, but it will not find the back of the net. We head to period number three, still one to nothing for the Dragons. Marner going to release a shot, and that is blocker to side. Now off the draw, a great opportunity. Finds the bring cap back door, and he just misses the net. A little two on no opportunity here. Over to Matthews in the middle, takes a wrist shot, and another great save for Igor Shesterkin. He is really keeping the fins in it as the Dragons are putting up a ton of pressure. Another great save for him there as well. Back now, a pass in the middle to Lindholm. He will wire a slap shot from the slot, beating Vasilevsky on the glove side and tying this game up at one. Another chance here. Lindholm takes a shot that gets blocked. Van Riemsdyk finds it, but a great save by Vasilevsky. Back the other way. A shot in front of the net there. Shosturkin will save that. Carlson passes it to Panarin, who gets pinned. Marner will come in to help his teammate and find Matthews' back door. And that will make it 2-1 to one for Detroit with under a minute to go. What a pass and what a finish by Austin Matthews. A big hit here on Braden Point would leave him injured. Ovechkin going to absolutely level him. Dying seconds now, Finn's net's empty. A pass in the middle, not able to get it off. It's broken up and the Dragons will advance to three and one and the Finns fall to two and two. The Dragons would clean up in the Stars department with Vasilevsky absolutely having a dominant performance in this one. Let's have a look at the highlights between the Lumberjacks and the Tomahawks. The Tomahawks still looking for their first win, currently at 0-3, and, and the Lumberjacks looking to even it out here to become 2-2. Early on, McDavid down low to Eichel, finds Pasternak in the slot, back to Eichel, but Carey Price will glove that one. Now Toronto on the attack, Miller to Klingberg, who takes a shot, and that will be tipped in front by Radulov, sending it home, making it 1-0 for the Tomahawks here in the first. Back the other way, Zaka gets a nice chance in front, but Carey Price going to stop that one as well. On the attack again, another great save by Carey Price, but on the rebound, Nico Hiche is going to pick it up and bury it to tie this game up, heading in to period number two. And early on in period number two, the Tomahawks have a power play, but Besser would be pinned up against the boards, try to kick the puck back to his defenseman, but nobody's home. Mark Stone wins the race, goes backhand, and buries it far side there, beating Price on the blocker. Posting in, what a goal, what an individual effort for Mark Stone. Robin Leonard with a nice save there. Back the other way, Pugliarvi has it in the slot, a nice dangle right in front of Carey Price, and he will bury it on the forehand. That will do it for period number two. We have a 3-1 to one lead for the Lumberjacks after two. Now in the final period of play, Hamilton back to Nurse. Over to Eichel who gets a nice shot off. 
but Price will stop that one to keep his team in it. Eichel once again getting another shot, but Carey Price will handle that one as well. Off the draw. Vancouver with some great passing here. Dreisaitl takes a shot off the blocker, and Bergeron can't quite get to the rebound on time. The Tomahawks starting to run out of time here. A shot in the slot that will be saved by Robin Leonard. McDavid passes it back to Eichel, who finds McDavid again, walks out, but Carey Price going to deny him on the doorstep. Now we have the Lumberjacks. A great pass up to McDavid off the boards. He goes past the defenseman, tries to toe drag in, and it actually hits the defenseman's skate, finds its way towards the net, but will not go in. However, McDavid will get the puck back moments later, and Barry won to make it 4-1 for the Lumberjacks. We're now under a minute to go here, and a great shot and a great save by Carey Price. Another attempt there, but Hughes was able to pick off that pass, and that will do it for this game. It is 4-1 for the Lumberjacks, who increase to 2-2, two and, two, and the Tomahawks fall to 0-4. Oh Vancouver definitely outplayed the Tomahawks, and that is evident in terms of the shots and time on attack. Let's hop on board with the Royals and the Tigers, one team looking to remain undefeated, where the other team is still looking for that very first crucial win. Tigers-Royals. Sebastian Aho with a chance early on here, takes a shot that will be blocker to side by Grubauer. Dullin takes a pass in the middle, able to walk in on Bobrovsky, but he will save that. Reinhardt takes a shot, and Grubauer going to blocker that aside. Lots of great performance from the goalies early on here, but that was a whoopsie. Yeah, Don Skoy goes to take a shot, sort of fluffed on it, off the defender and in to make it 1-0 for the Royals. A nice tip there, but still able to save it is Philip Grubauer. Off the draw, D to D, Giordano gets it down to Don Skoy who takes a shot. The rebound comes out to Dylan Cousins. He's going to bury that to make it 2 to nothing for the Royals, heading in to period number 2. Now in period number 2, right off the draw, Miko Rantanen is going to pick it up, find Nate McKinnon. Who goes all the way back to Kale McCarr, walks in, backhand, what a goal. Some great passing by the Colorado Avalanche there, or should I say the Los Angeles Royals. Barkov takes a shot that will be stopped by Philip Grubauer. And a leading pass here to Landeskog gives him a breakaway, but a tremendous defensive effort and back check from Jacob Slavin to break that one up. Now the Tigers have a chance here in front of the net just wide. Another chance, but Grubauer is going to glove that one down. Clayton Keller... Walking in, finds his way into the slot, takes a shot that goes off a defender, and much like the goal earlier, just an unfortunate deflection, goalie not able to react on time, finds the back of the net, and that will cut the lead down to two. The Royals, back the other way, on the power play, takes a shot in the slot, Rantanen meeting Irene, and banking this one into the net, a 4-1 lead for the Royals, heading into period number three, they are definitely in the driver's seat for this one. Alexiak gets a pass in the middle, but will give it away. Barkov back to the point, manages to get it back and bury it once again, cutting that lead down to two. Final minute of the third period here. Reinhardt found in the slot, gets a shot off, and gets absolutely dropped like a two-foot putt. Shen will take exception to that, challenging Giordano. Hits him with an uppercut there, but Giordano would eventually get the best of him in that Tilly. Now 22 seconds to go, net empty, pass over to Drake Batherson. He's going to bury that to make it 5-2. Things are just not going well for the Newfoundland Tigers in this one. Grubauer hyped, the team advances to 4-0, and the Tigers unfortunately fall to 0-4. Now the Royals only had 16 shots in this one and 5 goals. I think it might be time for a little goaltender swap for the Newfoundland Tigers. Let's look at the last matchup of the night where it is the Whales versus the Bulldogs. Again, we have a situation where 2-1 and one is facing off with 2-1. and one. Both teams looking to move up in the standings here. Early on, Ehlers between the legs. Takes a shot, but Merzlikin's going to stop that one. Back the other way. Gensel finds his way into the slot. Takes a shot, but Hellebuck going to glove that one down. Malkin gets the puck behind the net. Finds Anze Kopitar in the slot. That will make it one to nothing for the Boston Bulldogs. But back the other way, Bertuzzi gives it to Lee. He's able to walk out, and he will beat Merzlikens low there, tying this game up at one. Another great save by Hellebuck, keeping it tied at one. And dying seconds of the first period, Larkin gets a shot off. Merzlikens going to glove that one, and we will have a 1-1 tie after one. Now in period number two, Kopitar gets around one guy, passes it in the slot to Line A, but that will be gloved. 
Burns goes across to Dobson here, who wires a slap shot, but Merzlikin's going to see that one all the way through, and he will glove that. Vrana picking off a pass to the point. He comes in, goes to the forehand, but Merzlikin stayed with him the entire way and makes a huge save. Crosby and Line with a little give and go here. And Crosby tries to get a deke off, but a great defensive play by the Wales breaking that one up. It is still 1-1 heading into the final period of play. Shifley with a nice little deke stops up. Finds Kyle Connor who's going to bank that one off the post and in, making it 2-1 for the Wales. Couture in the slot will be robbed by Merzlikens on the glove there. Line A goes back door, but Hellebuck going to stop that one. A huge hit here by Chris Letang. Kyle Connor was not happy about that, and he is going to step up for his teammate. And Kyle Connor would ultimately get the best of Letang in this matchup. Larkin gets a pass in the middle, and he will find Mark Scheifele, who's going to bury that, making it 3-1 to one now for the Wales. Final minute of play. Net is empty. Pass in front from Matthew Barzell. He will find Timo Meyer, and that makes it 4-1. to one. They aren't done yet, though. They come back in. Pionk loses it. Verona ends up with the puck and passes it to Philip Zadina to make it 5-1. What a third period performance from the Wales. An outstanding performance from Connor Hellebuck, but you also got to give it up for the offense who did their job as well. Timo Meyer 1-1, one one. same with Mark Shifley. A look at the updated standings after week number 5 shows the Royals at 4-0. Got the Whales at 3-1, and one, Dragons also at 3-1, and one, the Bulldogs and Finns at 2-2, two and, two, and the Lumberjacks are right there with them. And then the Tigers and the Tomahawks are still on the hunt for their first win.